This lesson deals with the node voltage method. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter three, starting on page one. In this chapter, we're gonna take a look at some techniques to reduce the number of equations that we have to write to solve for a circuit variable. The first one of these is called the node voltage method. Using node voltages instead of element voltages can reduce the number of equations that we have to solve simultaneously. The node voltages are defined as the voltages between all the nodes in a circuit and a single reference node. I can better show you this on a schematic. Here I've got five elements and four nodes. I'll call this node A, this node B, and this node C, and this will be my reference. I'll also call this V sub A, V sub B, and V sub C. And the way to interpret that is that between node A and reference, there's a voltage V sub A. Between B and the reference, V sub B, and between C and the reference, V sub C where the reference is the minus terminal and the node is the plus terminal. Now it can turn out that these three voltages can be positive or they can be negative or they can be zero. We also think of the reference as zero volts. Let me next state the node voltage inspection property. If the kth two terminal element is connected between nodes X and Y, then the element voltage can be expressed in terms of the two node voltages as the following. The voltage across the kth element will be equal to V sub X minus V sub Y, where X is the node connected to the positive reference for the element V sub K. So shown here, if I define V sub K from X to Y, the plus terminal is where I'm gonna put V sub X to ground, and that implies that Y is from the minus terminal to ground. And what the property is saying is that V sub K is equal to V sub X minus V sub Y. Now, why is this true? Well, let's do Kirchhoff's voltage law around this loop. The rise in voltage is V sub X, the drop is V sub K plus V sub Y. If we take this equation and solve for V sub K, it's equal to V sub X minus V sub Y. And that's our property. Let's do an example. Suppose that I can measure the node voltages in this circuit, where I call this node voltage V sub A, V sub B, and V sub C. They can have a reference node considered to be zero volts. Now suppose that V sub A is five volts, V sub B is 10 volts, and V sub C is a minus three volts. Could you solve for the voltages across the elements, V1, V2, V3, V4, and V5? Let's first solve for the voltage V1. V1 actually is the node voltage V sub B, and that was equal to 10 volts. V2 has the plus sign and ground and the minus sign here. So what this really means is that V2 is this node voltage, which is zero, minus V sub C. But V sub C was minus three volts, and that would give me a plus three volts. Let's find element voltage V3, and that's gonna be V sub B minus V sub C. V sub B was 10, V sub C was minus three, so that gives me 13. Element voltage four is between A and C, so it'll be V sub A minus V sub C. V sub A is five, V sub C is minus three, and it gives me eight. Lastly, element voltage V5 is between nodes A and B, with the polarity shown. And that's gonna be V sub A minus V sub B. V sub A was five, V sub B was 10, so we get minus five. We can arbitrarily assign voltages across elements, and if we know the node voltages, we can solve for them. And again, some will be positive, some will be negative. That's the value. If you put a meter across it, you'd see a value of a plus or a minus voltage. Now this last example, we knew three node voltages and we could solve for the element voltages of five elements. In general, if you have an N node circuit, there are N minus one nodes. And if you know those N minus one node voltages, that actually is the minimum set of unknowns you need to solve for any voltage or any current. And this is the node voltage method. 